that we've gone through the full build of this rocket, I want to show you a couple of techniques that you could use. These are options, um, but some people like them. Uh, and the first of these is uh, papering of fins. And so this is where instead of using a sanding sealer to smooth the grain of the fins, I'm going to use just standard copier printer paper. And this will provide a nice smooth surface on the fin. It also strengthens the fin. Uh, it turns the whole thing into a nice laminate. And the key to this is using um, a good wood glue, first of all. Uh, white glues tend to cause more curling. They have more uh, water and such in them. And so you want something that's going to dry fairly quickly yet remain flexible. And the other trick to this is doing both sides of the fin as quickly as you can. So what I'm going to do here is first of all just cut out a section of my piece of paper here. And this doesn't have to be anything exact. It just has to be bigger than the fin. Okay, so my fin fits there, and I'm going to need two pieces, so I'm just going to cut this in half, roughly. And the paper has no grain or anything like that, so it doesn't really matter what orientation you give it. And nor are the, the dimensions of the paper really that critical, as long as they're bigger. Now, if you're going to put in any kind of an airfoil, um, do that before you paper the fins. And then just give it a light sanding. You don't have to do this for very long, just a few seconds on each side. And this is simply to knock down anything that might be projecting upward. Because if there are any bumps in here, those will end up in the paper as well. Also, if you have any deep gouges, like if you slipped while you're sanding and put a big old fingernail mark or something like that in there, use a little bit of wood filler to fix that gouge before you do the, the papering here. All right. So now we've got that, I'm going to apply a small amount here. It's going to look like a lot, but it's actually really thin. And you have to do this fairly quickly. And I recommend, if you've never done this before, try it on a piece of scrap balsa a few times before you actually try to do it on a fin. Okay, so I'm just going to completely cover my surface here. And then you can take um, either a, a small scrap piece of wood or a small dowel and this is critical here. We want to scrape most of this off. So I'm just going to go across like this. Um, you can do this with your finger as well if you don't have a nice piece of scrap wood. And I'm going to try and get as much off the edges there as I can. All right. But you do want this on the front face of any airfoiled edges. Because the paper will eventually fold over a little bit there. Alright, so now I'm just going to put this on my paper and squeeze it down really well. And then for my airfoiled edge, I'm just going to tilt this up a little bit. Okay, and that's going to allow the paper to adhere there. Alright, now I'm going to turn this over. Here, make sure you've got any glue off your finger. Got a little bit on there. And now you're just going to squeegee all this forward. And this is where you're going to find out if you had too much glue. Because if you do, the paper's going to wrinkle. And that's why I say use a wood glue, a good aliphatic glue, uh, rather than a white glue. Alright, so now that I've got that, Check my forward edge here again. Now I'm going to do the same thing once more. Just make a quick film here. And once more, go ahead and just spread this out with your finger. And you need to get the entire surface. And again, any tapered edges you have that you want to be papered, make 
make sure you get those. And again, I'm just going to take my little stick here, squeegee off most of that. And then take my other piece of paper here and put that over as well. Okay, and then again, make sure your, your glue finger is clean when you do this. And then once more, I'm going to move this over the edge that I have glued as well. Okay, and now at this point, I'm going to very carefully cut off most of the excess here. You can generally just do this freehand. Okay, that one's pretty close. This one I'm going to go ahead and cut down. everything in. And here at my leading edge where I have a taper, I'm just going to take my fingernails here and run that in. Okay. On the untapered edges here, I've just got them squared off. I'm just going to make sure that the, the paper actually is sticking all the way to the edges. Okay, And now I can just let this dry. And then when we come back, we'll trim off the excess paper here and then uh, add a little bit of super glue to help seal everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with the other fins, and when we come back, we'll see what happens with the paper. Now, some people like to place a, a book or other heavy flat object on here, um, and this is especially a good idea for really thin fins. These are thick enough, and I don't have any problems that I'm seeing with them curling or anything, so they're probably okay on their own. If you do want to put a book or other flat object on here, make sure that both the surface that it's on is good and flat and has no bumps or anything, and also make sure the book or other heavy object that you're putting on here is flat. And then put something non-stick in between the fin and the book just in case some of the glue soaks through and you don't stick it to the book. So a layer of wax paper, or a little plastic wrap, or even a, a recycled plastic bag would work well for that. So I'm going to finish the other fins and when we come back we'll look at how to trim the rest of the paper off. My fins have dried overnight and as you can see they're still nice and flat. And the next step is to simply remove the excess paper. To do this, make sure you've got a nice fresh knife blade here. And I'm just going to cut in a little bit at a time. So I'm not going directly to the wood yet. I'm just going to shave off the outermost regions like this. And if you do happen to cut the wood, if you slip a little bit or something like that, um, usually that's going to be fixable with just a little bit of super glue, so don't panic. All right, and now I'm going to come in and use the blade itself just to kind of start shaving inward here. And this is where you want that really sharp blade. Okay, uh, especially on the any edges you had that you airfoiled, we're going to want to be very careful that we don't shave into our airfoil. Okay, so I'm just coming a little bit here. I'm going to do this on both sides, just again a little bit at a time. So there's the edge of the balsa. And 
Now the paper did not stick all the way to the edge, and that's not uncommon. That's actually really hard to get it to do, at least initially. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and trim off the rest of these that have squared edges. And then I'm going to add some super glue to the edges. And once that dries, I can sand them smooth again. And that will remove the last of the excess paper. But you do want to get as much paper off as you can, as that will make the later finishing easier. So I'm getting right down here to the wood. And this, you can stop here depending on your comfort level. But the most, if you can get out as much paper as possible, you'll have less sanding to do later. Here. You do want to be careful if you're kind of tearing off that excess that you don't tear down into the parts that are still stuck to the wood. Alright, so there I've got it all trimmed. And the next thing to do here is to get a little bit of super glue and we're just going to run a little bit along the edges here and let it soak in. So to do this, the runnier your super glue is, the better. And I'm just going to use uh, kind of straight, regular, whatever you want to call it, super glue. Uh, if you have the water thin variety, that works even better. Um, but the thick gel stuff will not work for this. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of super glue here. And we don't want a lot, just enough to you know, moisten the edge of the paper. And this is just going to make it stiff and sandable so that when we're all done with it here, we can simply sand the, the remaining edge of the paper off. And as usual when using sandalacrylate glues, don't glue your fingers together. Now this is the root edge that I'm doing right now, and I'll definitely want to sand that down to get back to the, the porous finish there, as the uh, glue that we put the fins on with will hold better that way. Okay, now this is my leading edge that has a taper sanded into it already. So I just need a little, little bit in there to allow a good transition between the paper and the balsa. A little bit here. Right, and now I just need to let this dry for about 30 minutes or so until it's completely hard. And then we'll be able to sand off the edges there and then um, reform our taper so that it's nice and smooth. And then we just do that for all of the other fins. Now that my super glue has dried on the fin edges, it's just a matter of coming in and sanding those square and smooth again. You can use some fine or extra fine sandpaper. Okay, and since the only airfoiling I put onto these was on the leading edge here. Uh, the rest of the edges can simply be sanded square.
on my root edge here, I'm making sure to sand past any super glue that soaked into the wood there. And that's just so I get a better glue edge. Okay, and then the, the final part here, sanding the um, tapered edge. Here you may want a, a sanding T or a sanding block. You have a bit more control over the angle. And the key to remember is that this is still paper, so you want to be kind of gentle with it, even though it is now impregnated with the super glue. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around here and sand off any beading that occurred on the edges. And you can actually leave the, the little bit of a beading edge here on the um, root edge, because that will give you a little bit more surface area to work with the glue. But your other edges, you're probably going to want to sand those smooth. Now the advantage to doing this is you don't have to worry about filling the grain in your fins before painting, if that type of thing is bothersome to you. And it also, again, we now have a laminate of paper and wood here that's going to make it a lot stronger. Here on the, the leading edge here, I'm kind of I'm trying to feather the paper into the wood so it makes this nice smooth transition. Okay, and then you may even want to get in where you can do a little rounding with your fingers. pretty much the gist of it right there. And then we just need to repeat this with all the other fins and then they'll be ready to go. You can glue them on directly and really you won't have to do anything else to finish them other than applying a fillet as usual. Another modification we can make is to the shock cord. So the model comes with an elastic shock cord and that's how I built it in the main part of the video. But I also have this kind of love-hate relationship with Kevlar. Um, Kevlar shock cords are static so they're not elastic when you pull on them. Um, they don't get any bigger or smaller. But they are very heat and flame resistant. And so you don't have to worry about repeated flights burning the elastic and eventually resulting in a shock cord failure. Now because this is a static material, we need a long length of it. And the good rule of thumb is at least three times the rocket's length. So the rocket has a length of 31 inches, which means I want to make this about 90 inches. So I'm just going to measure this out. so I can loop this all up. What I'm using here is 100 pound test Kevlar cord which is more than heavy enough for what we're using here. Now as I said I've got this love-hate relationship with it. The hate part is because it is th so narrow and so tough that if you don't have enough of it you can end up with what's called a zipper and this is where the shock cord comes down against the body tube
So a zipper is where the, you have So Kevlar can create a zipper and this is where the shock cord gets snapped back against the body tube like this and ends up cutting it down the length. Now this can happen with elastic cords as well, but it's not as common in part because the elastic cord is wider. And so when we do this type of thing, especially with the very thin cord like this, something we can do to reinforce that is simply take a little bit of masking tape here. All right, and then finding where your shock cord is going to actually hit the tube there, we're simply going to wrap this around a couple of times and make essentially a little stopper here. And what I'm doing is effectively increasing the surface area that would hit against the body tube if a potential zippering situation occurs. Right, so I've got this pad now of masking tape and if I've placed it right now if it comes back against the body tube there's a greater surface area there and it's much less likely to zipper. Okay, So to do this once we've got our cord cut then we're going to take the ejection baffle here and simply tie this into the eye loop and I like to do this by making a loop here first. So I'm just going to create an overhand knot in a loop. Like this. Okay, and then I can pass this through and then pass the entire cord through that. Now to do that, I'm going to have to remove my demonstration masking tape there. Right, now I can just put that and then the other end through like this. Right, now, it does mean you have to move a lot of shot cord out of the way and be careful you don't tie it into a big knot here. All right, now that's good and strong. And if you want to make it even stronger, just take a little dab of super glue and allow that to soak into the knot on your loop here. And that will keep that from uh, unraveling or coming apart that way. And then when we mount this inside, all, right, all we have to do is string this whole thing through. This would get glued in place here, and then once again we can find that point on the shock cord that might come loose. This is where we put our little masking tape bumper on there again, and then this is good to go. And we simply tie this to the other end, or tie the other end here, to the nose cone eye. And from there everything else is the same. You'll install the parachute in the same way, and this will be ready to go.